So we have a 60 year old man brought to the emergency department with sudden onset of palpitation and dyspnea. ECG done that reveals heart rate of 120 per minute. It is irregular rhythm, narrow QRS complex, no P wave. Which of the following determine the ventricle contraction in this patient? Well, as long as the question concerned, if you look very rapid ventricle rate, no P wave, irregular pulse, perhaps we are dealing with atrial fibrillation because this thing happened only in atrial fibrillation. No other arrhythmias have irregular pulse with no P wave. Okay. Well, the answer now what determine the ventricle contraction rate in this patient? The answer to this question is AV node refractory period. Now, let's discuss the basic concept about the about the refractory period. We are well aware this is the SA node, AV node, bundle of his Purkinje fiber. Very simple. Impulse come from a, a SA node. It come to AV node, but AV node has a maximum refractory period. Here, impulse is, has to stay for some time before it goes down. Okay. So, one thing is very clear in the entire conduction tissue, right from SA node to Purkinje fiber, maximum refractory period is at AV node. Well, this for first point. Second point, when we have atrial fibrillation, the impulses are coming from every part of atria. Well, there are at least 500 to 600 impulses which are coming to AV node from various foci. It's not a single foci. Multiple foci are there which are sending impulses to AV node. Let us say, 600 impulses have come to AV node. Okay, let me say this is AV node, bundle of his, and this is the right and left bundle branch. 600 impulses have reached AV node. Right? Out of 600, maybe 150 go down. That means 450 are stop at the level of AV node only. Only 150 can go down, and this is known as concealed conduction. Concealed conduction. Why AV node could hold the impulses? Because it has got refractory period. Now, 150 impulses are coming. The ventricle rate is 150. Remember, 150 means 150 ventricle rate, which is very fast. That's why patient will complain of palpitation. Like in our patient also, patient complain of palpitation, sudden onset of palpitation because of a very rapid ventricle rate. Well, now we use digoxin in this patient. Why we use digoxin in a patient of atrial fibrillation? Now, when we use digoxin, it will increase the further refractory period of AV node. Increase refractory period of AV node. Well, in the previous told instances, 150 impulses were coming down to the ventricle. Now it is further increasing the refractive period, but I can denote by making it larger picture. Larger, okay, just for better understanding. So now more refractive period means now maybe 120 impulse will go down. Why refractive period has increased more? And after some time, even refractive period increases more maybe 100 impulse are going down. The ventricle rate is going down and patient will have rate control. The rate are control, the palpitation will also lessen. So, so role is to in, uh, change the refractive period of AV node, thereby, thereby we are going to reduce the rate control. So now we use digoxin particularly in heart failure and atrial fibrillation are the two important uses. Regarding atrial fibrillation, I told you they reduce the conduction at AV node, that is the rate control by concealed conduction. They reduce the, they, but one more thing, they reduce the refractive period of atria. 
This is a very, very important point you got to know. They are increasing the refractive period of AV node, but they are reducing the uh, ref uh, that refractive period of atria. So they convert atrial flutter into atrial fibrillation. We also know very well in the atrial flutter, the usually the atrial discharge rate is somewhere in the range of 200 to 350. But they, as they are going to reduce the refractive period of atria, they convert into atrial fibrillation. You mean to say now the atrial discharge rate is in the range of 600. But we are not using this quality of digoxin, we are using quality of increased refractive period of at AV node, okay? So ultimately, uh, ultimately uh, ventricle rate will go reduce because of increased refractive period of AV node. Now, other advantage of cardioxin is it we use for heart failure also because they cause increased contactility. How they cause increased contactility? What the basic mechanism? This the cardiac cell. Normally, sodium goes out. Potassium come in. This is by the enzyme sodium potassium ATPase. So when we use dioxin, it inhibit this enzyme. When they inhibit this enzyme, sodium cannot go out. So potassium cannot come in. So sodium will remain inside and potassium will stay outside because this pump is not working. Now, this sodium will get exchange with calcium. Calcium will come in, sodium will go out and this is done by the enzyme, sodium calcium exchanger. Now calcium has come in, it is bound to contractile protein. in the myocyte and that lead to increase cardiac contactility. So that's the basic idea how and why we use in heart failure because they cause increased contactility, what we call a positive ionotropic effect. But they reduce the heart rate as I told you that they are negative chrono tropic effect because they are going to reduce the uh, reduce the ventricle rate. Now, which drug should be added to digoxin to treat atrial fibrillation? Write down the answer. Okay. The answer is we should use digoxin. Uh, we, with digoxin, we should use quinidine. Quinidine has total reverse action. It is uh, okay. Now, what we do? This was the AV node, AV node, in AV node, digoxin, increase refractive period. Quinidine, it decreases refractive period. A, this is AV node. Atria, decrease refractive period, increase refractive period. You can see they total have opposite action. But the main thing is the digoxin has more effect on AV node. Quinidine has more action on the atria. That means if we use a combination of digoxin, it is going to reduce the rate by, by uh, concealed conduction. And if you use quinidine, it's going to reduce the atrial rate. So atrial rate will be reduced by the quinidine and the conduction down the line AV node will be reduced by the, by the digoxin. So they will have the best combination in controlling rate of the atrial fibrillation. Okay, so the golden line to remember, digoxin increases the refractive period of AV node and it also causes increased contactility of the myocardium. So that's why we use in atrial fibrillation. Well, I hope you like the session. Just to inform you, we have following courses for you. Smart Medicine, there are 350 hours of pre-recorded video lecture of whole internal medicine. It includes all super specialty and allied subject, covering A to Z, including basic concept about every topic. Second, we have tests and discussion. There are more than 1,000 questions which, with discussion of the questions, sample question and discussion you saw in this session. 
Now, third thing is Medicine Simplified, which is a textbook of medicine. Harrison is the ultimate book to read medicine, but it is too vast. Reading one page of Harrison, you need half an hour. To understand, you need two hours, but you need only two minutes to forget what was written in that page. Then what is the solution? We have Medicine Simplified. It's a textbook of medicine, but so-called mini Harrison. It's a summary of what you need to read from Harrison. The book is available in Amazon also. Now, these three things are more than enough for your MD, DNB medicine and family medicine final exam preparation, need SS exam preparation. You don't need to read any other book. These three are complete in all the aspects. For more detail, you can contact at this number. It's a mobile ad as well as WhatsApp. And this is my personal email ID. Anybody want to reach to me, you can contact me at this email ID. Thank you very much.